Welcome back to another tutorial on trap music. My name is Nathan, or Icarus Moth. I'm here at 343 Labs, and today we are gonna be focusing on the 808, arguably the most important aspect of a trap song. Previously, I showed you how to create drums from scratch using Operator in Ableton, and today we're gonna to be using Operator to create the 808. So similar to how we started with the kick drum, we are going to start with just a sine wave and operator. Now, there's gonna be a couple of things that I wanna do differently here just to help create some extra harmonics in the 808. Now we do this so that we can hear it on smaller speakers. So we don't need either headphones or a big bassy system to actually hear our bass sound. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some upper harmonics in a couple of different ways. Now, operator makes this pretty easy, but you, know, you can use anything that you're comfortable with here. I'm actually going to add some of the upper harmonics via the partial grid here in the wave shaper in Ableton. And what this does is if you're familiar with the harmonic signature, it adds what I'm doing here is the third, fourth, and fifth harmonic signature above my root note, which is going to kind of just thicken up the sound just a little bit in a very subtle way. It's not really going to change the way that it sounds. Now, the oscillator above it is another simple sine wave just running right into that one, but not very much. Now, just like what I've done with the partial grid, this is also going to just add some extra upper harmonics and thicken out my sound without really changing the way that my sound comes across. So let me show you a comparison between a basic sine wave and the one that we've created here. So a basic sine wave in the sub range sounds kind of like this. There's a little bit of a pitch envelope on there, but it's not really generating too much there. Now, when I adjust my parameters here to add the harmonics that I had before, we should notice that it's not so much of a pure tone anymore and we do get a little more rumble to the sound than we had before. You guys notice that? So that's our starting point. We don't really want to mess with that too much. We can always go back after the fact and add effects or add any crazy sounds that we really want to. And the one thing that I really need to make sure that I'm doing here in this operator is adding a pitch bend, very similar to how we designed our kick drum. Now, the settings or the ADSR on this pitch envelope are going to be a little bit different than how we have it on the kick drum, but they still need to be set to the sound. So most notably, the sustain pitch is going to be set to zero because we definitely wanna make sure that the note that we hit on the keyboard is the note that the synthesizer is playing. So we're not going to adjust that. We will adjust the peak, which is going to be where does our sound start and then, you know, the decay is how fast does it go down to our original pitch? So we do this so we can create the little bump, you know, the round top end of an 808. We don't want it to just be a regular bass sound. We want it to have a little bit of oomph at the beginning. So just like we did with the kick drum, we're going to add that pitch bend, but we're going to make it more subtle than the kick drum had it because we don't really want this to get in the way of the kick drum we've already designed. So with no pitch envelope, we sound like this. And listen to what happens to the sound as I raise that pitch envelope amount up. You'll notice that, you know, we kind of pass through a sweet spot and enter kick drum land again. So we want to find our sweet spot, which for this sound, I think is somewhere between maybe like 30 and 50. I'll leave it around higher 40s for now. Now we could be done here if we wanted to, but I'm not gonna be done here. I wanted to show you something maybe a little bit fancy that we can do with this 808 here to give it a little bit more oomph still. So what I've done here is I've split my 808 into two different chains because I want to separate the frequencies and process them a little bit differently. Now, the main sub, now that's being sent through this bottom chain. So you'll notice that it's pretty much at the same volume it started as. And I'm not doing too much here with an EQ. I'm just boosting the low end a little bit and I'm adding a little bit of saturation with the saturator, but nothing that's really gonna change my sound all too much. Now, if I go to the chain right above that, we'll notice the saturator on there is driven much stronger than the one underneath it. And we also have the soft clip on. Now, if I solo this layer, you'll hear what this sounds like. It's kind of the top end of our 808, right? But now that I've isolated it out of the sub, I can process it and make it more present. So that's what I've done with this saturator here. And the EQ is there to compensate for any low end phasing. So I don't want an affected version of my sub playing on top of the original sub because that gives me an opportunity to phase out my low end and that can have me run into some problems. So that's what this sub cut at 104 Hertz is doing for me. Now, if I were to turn this off and play my 808, you'll notice 
we're getting closer back to that original sine wave that we started with. And we don't want that. We want to be able to hear this 808 on any system we play this on, because like I said, this is probably the most important aspect of trap music. It's what makes trap music, trap music, right? So when I turn this back on, boom, now, now we can really hear this sound ring through and we're not going to have as much trouble mixing this for smaller systems. Now, there is one more thing that I'd like to mention here, just very quickly and very shortly. I'm gonna be using a technique called side chaining to make sure that my sub is not playing directly on top of my kick, but this is going to be very snappy. I don't want you to be really be able to hear the sound of this side chain. So we can see on this compressor, when I play a kick drum, the little yellow line that makes itself visible will show you what is happening to the sound every time my kick drum hits. So let's see that here. So that little yellow line, you saw that slam down and then jump back up to the top. So that happened very quickly because I don't really want you to hear the 808 cut out. I just want it to make room for the kick drum for a very short period of time while the punch of the kick drum is ringing through. So let's hear the drums and the 808 together, shall we? Now you notice that even though both of them sit in a very similar frequency range, they're not getting in the way of each other at all. Even though I'm playing different sub notes on the same note of kick drum, they don't seem to be fighting each other. That's what you really wanna to get to. So now that you know how to make your kick drum, your hi-hats, your snares, and your 808s, it seems to me like you're ready to start producing your own trap music. If you wanna see any similar tutorials to this one, you know, just subscribe down below. Or if you are enrolling in classes either online or here in New York City, click the link in the description. Again, my name is Nathan or Icarus Moth. We're here at 343 Labs bringing you some, you know, really tasty trap information here. And I'll catch you in the next one.